All right, so we are here with our next round. This is uh, Joe Bernard versus uh, Alex. Uh, best pal. That's probably most people are familiar with. I'm here with uh, Connor, uh, who you just saw with this very gross uh, obstacle deck. So uh, it's good to see what is going on here. Now, have you played against either one of these people yet, uh, Connor? Do you know like what they're playing? Yeah, so I played against Alan round one. Um, and I got to look at what Omnipoke was playing just a little bit at the end of round one. So... Um, Al's deck, uh, so I don't really know Al's deck that well, um, because he prized three of his attackers against me. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's, but... that, that can be rough. <laughs> yeah, uh, probably probably not the way he envisioned his games going, but, um, so, oh, Al overdrew there. Oh, off the end. So you used to play an end of six, yep. Yeah, important thing to note, I guess, is anyone that's just tuning in, is that this is a five prize, 50... 50 card deck game so um you would only draw five off the end instead of six yeah yeah so al uh he said it himself that he doesn't think it has enough attackers in it he only has four which is not amazing and one of them requires a rare candy to come into play which is superior um this haunch croak really really nice and powerful card faint attack is a solid one energy attack and then raven's claw can clean up any knockouts but joe looks like he has a very start here good, very good start here as well with the Bruxish, um, although he doesn't necessarily have any enablers for bench damage right now. Uh, even one for 20 in Confusion is pretty nice. Yeah, I like the... It's a, a lot more of a useful basic, especially in these, like, lower HP type of uh, situations. So, like, in, like, current standard, like, the 60 damage isn't necessarily that great, but you factor in that Pokemon have, like, 90 HP or, like, around 120. I mean, there's a lot of bigger Pokemon in the cube, of course, but... Generally speaking, like if you follow my wound, can inflict some major damage onto some uh, very important Pokemon, especially if you get damage counters on the field early. Yeah, and on a lot of these setup attackers, things like Chata, Mindbend will actually set up follow the wound for itself, so that's pretty nice too. Um, Al's mimic is hitting into a good hand here, though. Oh, definitely. Computer surge off the top too, especially uh, uh, especially because he he's going to need some more. Uh, we want to play to start drawing cards. Uh, I guess he has backup Porygon as the as the Porygon choice, or is it download? He has backup Porygon and Energy Draw Delcaddy. So the uh, item based uh, Ultra Ball in this hand is very live. That's very good. And then he's got the computer search to grab pretty much any other card that he's looking for. I'm not quite sure what he's going to need besides energy. And I guess he needs to start setting. Does he have any other ways to spread damage, do you think? Not from what I saw. He's definitely just going to need some attackers here. That's like the biggest thing. I would imagine he goes for a Snivy because Superior is one of his best attackers. Um, his energy acceleration is actually Bronzong with Metal Links. Uh, he does have a 1-1 one, one line and he features a lot of metal energy in his deck. Interesting. Yeah, so we're, we're really... And I feel like this is probably the case across the whole stream. We're only seeing a small slice of... Um, we're only seeing a small slice of what these players actually have in their decks yeah especially because it's all singleton lines you don't really have uh an option to always have your best attacker in play so players will often make whatever they have work on in the moment so you might see a lot of different strategies coming out from just one deck which that's pretty cool i really like the diversity that it encourages i mean you are pretty much forced into i should say <laughs> Yeah, yeah, especially a cube like this. Uh, you have so many 1-1 one, one lines, you have so many options. Looks like we do have a comment in chat that the audio is a little bit uh, off between us. I'm probably a bit loud, and uh, so we can we can get that fixed up. It'll be all good. I'm told to boost my audio in horse chat. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, yeah, of course, let us know if you hear anything in the um, in the stream. So we appreciate any comments we can get just so we can improve the quality as we go. Um, it looks like the Ultra Ball, yeah, it's very much live. He drew a Cheryl, probably not very helpful at this moment. Um, I'm guessing you th he's definitely going for, I guess, a backup Porygon uh, and just to keep drawing cards. Yeah, I have to imagine the backup Porygon is the play here. He does Ultra Ball away ditto, prioritizing the Ordinary Rod and the Cheryl over it. Um, I can definitely see it. His deck does have ways to abuse Cheryl with Metal Links, but he really needs to be setting up more stuff right here. So that's kind of what I'm wondering uh, about what he's going to go for, especially off of this backup. Uh, does he have any, like, Search 3 Basics or even Search 2? That would be really good. He's probably not going to be able to get a Mimic off uh, because 
Uh, Omnipoke did confuse him here, so a little bit of an awkward spot for Al. Yeah, it didn't seem. It seems like his uh, his he does have great targets for the comp search to discard. Cause I feel like he wants to preserve all of these resources that he has. Uh, but wow, he, he actually got into uh, quite a fair a bit of cards there with the Bronzor and the uh, Delcaddy as well. I think that could have almost been a Mallow for what he drew into. <laughs> yeah, hard to argue with that. Now, again, he really is just looking for these Pokemon. And he unfortunately is not going to be able to bench this Lapras, at least if he wants to be able to bench another Pokemon this turn. Um, we could actually see the Lapras come down just anticipating the Chatot gets knocked out by Bruxish, which... I don't really think Omnipoke has a better play than that right now. So, reasonable. Um, but I would almost like to see a computer search here just to get a supporter, refill the hand, um, and uh, kind of get him on his way to setting up an attacker other than Hodgecrow, which is not great in this situation. Yeah, I mean, Hodgecrow is just doing very minimal damage, so I can I can agree. Yeah, definitely. Um, I guess, uh, you can't really mimic this turn either, or because it'd be a confusion, so... Or I guess he could, but... He could try for it. It is a very risky endeavor. Uh, so he does bench the Lapras. He goes for a Bucks training, maybe looking to... All right, and he draws a Reverse Valley, so he can faint attack, uh, the Bruxish for 50 here, which is pretty good. Yeah, actually, I, I don't hate that. Now, it is interesting. Uh, so, Al in his deck, one of his attackers is this Steelix uh, with Iron Tail. However, a big problem with that is that he needs the Fliptini in play that's in his deck to get value out of the Steelix. And now his entire bench is full of support Pokemon. Um, so, as strange as it is, I might even have just liked to see him let this Chatot get knocked out. Yeah, because then it would also help him free up that bench space, like you said. And the chatouts are really doing that much for him. Uh, especially now that he has backup in play. Like, he's not really going to be looking for that many... He hasn't had that many turns where he can use Mimic at this at this point in the game. Uh, especially yeah, back at the end of draw. Both very nice. Yeah. Uh, it looks like we're going to see another com uh, confused Pokemon over here with that uh, Bruxus' first attack. Which I think special conditions are always a good... Uh, can be very game and practice like this. So, especially because you yeah. know your opponents aren't running a ton of switch outs, that it's unlikely that this confusion could go uh, away. I mean, obviously can, and that's one of the risks. But um, I think this was definitely a great option uh, for uh, for Joe here, just because um, now if he loses a turn of attacking or flips tails, um, that Bruxish's second attack can end up uh, doing some really good damage. Um, in fact, I guess he has a, um, almost the knockout set up with the uh, Vitality Band doing an extra 10, so he's doing 70. So all it would take would be another damage counter to shore that one up, but definitely a good play, though, by Joe. Yeah, and we actually see a Pokemon Center Lady come down on this Bruxish, basically preventing Al's last turn from even happening. Um, most likely, we're going to see a retreat out of this Honchkrow, because leaving it in the active is going to be... He passed. Interesting. Yeah, so no he decided not to go decided not to go back into maybe a chat out or something. He wouldn't necessarily wanted to have mimicked, but it would be nice to just have something in the active that wasn't so valuable. Now Joe is gonna go back into this Golurk and maybe Iron Fist of Justice for about or for 60 damage. And uh Iron Fist of Justice is probably one of the best attack names Pokemon has ever made. Oh, definitely. I mean <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think maybe Al was contemplating he didn't want to give up the prize with Chatot, but I think that's kind of one of the risks you kind of have to, or you just have to, none of the downsides I should say you have to accept here, because um, you really don't want damage on this uh, Honchko. It's one of your strongest attackers right now, um, because even with 3 energy Bronzong isn't doing a ton. Um, this goal is really scary. 130 HP is a lot to deal with right now. Um, the fact that his attacker that can do the major damage to it is confused. It's not a great uh, situation to be in. I don't know how much switch outs he has in the deck. Uh, we did see him comp search before, but uh, it's kind of, I don't know, it's, it's definitely risky. I, I would agree. I would probably retreat the chat out and sacrifice the price card in the situation. Yeah, I think I would just uh, throw the chat out up there just because if, if Omnipoke wants the prize, he can always just follow the wound of the chat out at any point in the game. Like, it's not really a concern at this point the for, for Al to lose the prize. 
but uh, losing the Honchkrow is, is going to be a big deal. And with the Iron Fist of Justice coming out, dealing 90 damage, now Al does have the Cheryl, which is going to allow him to retreat the Honchkrow and then heal it, which is very good. Um, but just not having that Chadot on the board would be really nice. Um, just being able to bench... Well, he can't bench the Snivy anymore because he has discarded the Pokemon Breeder with the Computer Search earlier. But, you know, even being able to get, like, Dedenne or something on bench would be very nice. It's really interesting to see how the um, the discard effects can be such a toll because, like, when you discard something like Snivy, you only have one you only have one Snivy in your deck. So it's not like when you're playing a regular keep game where you probably have up to maybe four copies, five copies in your deck. This in this situation, yeah. your your main attacking lines, you only have one copy. So stuff like Sycamore or Ultra Ball or Comp Search can yeah. pay a heavy cost if the wrong cards are in your hand. Interesting to see how that changes. Yeah, and he has to be very careful too. So um with the he he discarded the breeder instead of the ordinary rod earlier, and I really think I would have liked to see the ordinary rod discard just because that keeps his superior open in a later game. However, he might have a way to get it back. I'm not totally sure. So uh we, we might see something like that. We do see a hammer in though from the bronze on. He decides not to play the Cheryl, maybe trying to get more value out of it by healing the bronze on next turn as well. I do understand what he's going for. It could get punished by a follow of the wound. However, Omni Poke Sand is not very good, <laughs> so it's not going to. Yeah, and even just a two card hand is not great. Or now it's a one card hand. Um, I wonder what he's switching into here. He could switch it to the Audino to draw more cards. He could be going for follow the wound to try to stall. Um. Is Reverse Valley flipped towards the uh, the dark benefits on his side or the metal? Uh, so Reverse Valley is giving him damage currently. Okay, so it's not benefiting the spawn, so we'll see 30 damage from the Brooks, which is actually relevant because now right. uh, the, the damage can one-shot with the other attack, or I guess it would be two-shot at that point. Yeah. Uh, I actually really would have liked to see Cheryl last turn because now it's not actually possible for Al to uh, get the Bronzong out of the active and attack with the Honchkrow in the same turn while healing it because Cheryl is forced to heal the Bronzong and discard all the energy off of it. it looks like he's actually going to retreat and maybe play Cheryl. Retreat with a Porygon, maybe just Machine Burst for 30. It's not a bad play. He does play the Cheryl here, so it's going to heal him up. Maybe he's going to go for... I, I was... I think he's trying to go for the Evoluter, but uh, he doesn't really have any targets. He doesn't have anything to evolve, yeah. So, um... Oh! Oh, he gets the upside on Machine Burst because it has a technical machine attached to it. I've never seen that happen before. <laughs> okay, I have to pull Porygon 2 up just, just so we can appreciate this moment here. Because I agree, I uh, was not thinking about that. But, <laughs> uh, I mean, hats off. Only folks definitely not happy about this Cheryl. Uh, I, I'd imagine very few people are when Cheryl comes down. <laughs> yeah, he's shaking it lots of times. <laughs> so yeah, let me pull up this Porygon. Oh, right. That Porygon 2 has Machine Burst for 30, and it has Technical Machine, which Evoluter is. Uh, the Fitting Pokemon's now asleep and burned. So, <laughs> wow, what a great out for him. Uh, and we do see a top oh, top deck top copycat. copycat. Very and nice. Great can to uh, copycat as well, as Al has quite a bit of cards. So... <laughs> That might have uh, that definitely put him back in this game. Although I'm not seeing many um, Pokemon, you see a copy of Moo Moo Milks for healing, so that actually could be pretty good. Um, yeah, it's important to note that uh, Omnipoke did flip double tails here on the sleep and the burn. So Bruxish going up to 50 damage and staying asleep for the turn. It means even if he does heal it with the Moo Moo Milk, it's not going to be able to do anything, and it's going to be stuck in the active for another turn. So probably not a situation he's particularly happy about. No, and I and I'm wondering what his next play is going to be. I mean, I guess he has Opal for next turn if he wants to try to find a certain card. Um, I'm not quite sure what the Polyrath is in this cube, or if it's a Politoed. Um, so I don't know if that's an option for him. I think Dark Dragonite is the uh, evolution in this cube for Dratini, so I think that searches him out of Pokemon, which could be nice. Yeah. So um, the uh, the evolution for um. Poliwhirl is a Poliwrath. It's from Evolutions. It deals 1 for 50, uh, and I believe 50 more damage if Poliwrath came off the bench that turn, and then it has a second attack that deals some decent damage and removes some energy. So it's um, a pretty good card, especially if it comes off the bench here, and that is another Tails on the burn. So uh, 
Not a situation Omnipoke is probably too thrilled to be in. Let me see this poor this Porygon too can take a prize now, which is <laughs> I mean Yeah. Yeah, definitely. We I imagine we see him actually go back to set up the bronzong with the metal links. Yeah, he, that is that is exactly what he does. So darkness energy coming down from hand, metal energy coming down from discard. And or like, coming up from discard, I suppose. And that gold arc with the six damage counters on it is so good for Al just because of the Honchcrow's um Ravenclaw attack stays pretty uh pretty annoying for him. So um he's gonna be able to threaten the prizes no matter what. And we see an admin come down. Um basically ruining this copycat for uh uh Joe, but he didn't really have a lot uh in the hand, so but getting admin, especially uh at this point. Still doesn't feel great. That's why he drew into quite a few cards from that hand. You're seeing. Yeah, uh, we'll probably see Sophocles come down, draw four more cards. Oshawott come down as well. He's just going to retreat and let the burn take the Bruxish because it is new burn, I believe. Yeah. So, guaranteed 20 damage. He gets a free prize at the same time, so. Yeah, better just to send up the chat out because you don't really... It's a free retreat anyway, and you don't really care if it gets knocked out. You probably... Like it's it's indifferent, so um I'm curious his options on Joe's side seem very limited. Although I'm curious to see what he gets off this Sophocles. We are seeing the uh the Moo Moo Milk come down and are we gonna see double tails? Double tails on Oh Moo Moo man milk. that's some spoiled milk, so not gonna work out for him this time. <laughs> oh man. Poor spoiled milk. Um but uh, we probably see the Oshawa come down and maybe then a Sophocles away. Elama, Grass Energy, draw four cards. Next turn, he has a solid Volkner's Philosophy. He could play the Volkner's Philosophy this turn as well. Actually, going to go for the Hearing first. And he hits the Dark Dragon there. That's a yeah. pretty good card. That makes up for the double tails on the. Uh... I'm sure he would actually. That would have been great for him because then that play I mentioned with Honchkrow coming out would just swing completely negated. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And now the Honchkrow is so much more threatening. So actually looks like he has prized the Polyrath uh, because he gets the Duot with Dark Dragonair. So I'm sure we're going to see a Sophocles this turn, given that there's another card in his hand that's kind of clogging it up. Yeah, I think yeah, I could not see him uh, really going into like Voltage Philosophy. He could go for Alenia, actually, and try to disrupt uh, Al's hand, um, which I wouldn't hate, but I feel like... I don't know. I'm going for this route. Makes me think he's going to play the... He's going to play the Vulcan Philosophy, actually. Okay. Drawing up to six. All right. Vulcaner's not bad. Vulcaner's... Uh, Sophocles after the Vulcaner's is going to be good as well. That's true. So. He's going to be able to build a lot better of a hand than he would have uh, with the other way around. He does have the POW, I guess. I don't know what he's really threatening at this point because he doesn't really have anything set up that can handle the honcho <laughs> yeah powering up the lapras is probably not a bad play just given that al has a lot of his energy in the discard at this point so we might not have quite as many options as far as retreat goes um although he could be kind of waiting even longer for al to commit more energy to the board and then go for a deck out play yeah and he has seen that al's discarded um some recovery before so this is definitely going to be i don't know interesting to see he doesn't know that he has ordinary rod still in his hand but he might still know that he has it um, available to him. Although players don't really know each other's decks, so it's hard to say what information you're going off of. But you just assume there's some sort of recovery in the deck if they discarded their other so early. But these flips are brutal. Another double uh, tails for Omnipoke. Who would have known that Porygon 2 with a uh, technical machine was going to be a powerhouse card in this matchup? <laughs> We'll say this cube is definitely delivered on the chaos part of it. There's some very unconventional things happening. Yeah, yeah, this is pretty wild. We actually see a victory bell in Omnipoke's hand, which means he has, what, five stage twos, potentially? If there is a Dragonite in the deck, which there very well might not be. Dark Dragonair is just a really good support mon on its own in a cube like this. So Hearing is going to draw a card. Um... I don't exactly know what Joe is looking for here. It's pretty clear at this point that the Polyrath is in the prize cards, so... Yeah, which is a bit unfortunate. He's going to probably have to start setting up a Oh, it is line. not in the prize cards. Oh, so maybe he just wanted to get the same route online. Yeah, maybe he's trying to have the ability to threaten that 
definitely made sense. Um, polymath coming down here, I have to imagine, just because um, Dashing Punch won't be alive if he doesn't evolve first. So, Water Energy down to Duop. He's setting up on the bench well, and the prize count is not horrendously in Al's favor. It's really only going to be um, at that 20, or at the uh, at the two prize lead, which is pretty reversible, especially in a situation like this, where uh, Omnipoke does have so many good options. So, could see a turnaround, uh, especially with Al having so few Pokemon on board that he can actually attack with. You know, Bronzong and Hotchkrow are not great attackers. Yeah, um, like Honchiro has a little bit of damage built up, but it's not really, once he is to stage 2 in the active and can attack with it, it's not going to have that great of an effect on it, especially because if he's taking knockouts with it, this game could tumble very fast in the uh, in Joe's favor, so definitely agree. I've seen a Desert Shaman come down here to disrupt the hand on uh, Joe's side, but I don't know, it's, it seems like, I mean, this Porygon's been doing a lot of work, and he's taking another knockout, but it's going to, if it's going to get to a point, I, I guess, if, if Joe can set up something threatening that Al's board might crumble. The float stone for Omnipoke here is very, very good because that means he is going to be able to search out the Polyrath with Evolutionary Light and then get back into it and swing for 100 to knock out the Porygon. Which would be very nice for, um, for Joe here. Yeah, it's going to be a very good start, at least, as far as coming back into this game. What are we looking at in terms of prize count here? I haven't been able to check. So it's four to five, which is actually a lot closer than the game so far would indicate, given how it's been going for Omnipoke. However, Al is about to take another prize, probably with a Porygon. So Audino's going to go down. Uh, Al is going to go up another prize. So it will be a three to two lead. Uh, it looks like he's actually going to retreat. Interesting. Did Omnipoke flip tails? No, Omnipoke flipped double heads, so Audino is no longer burned. Al basically just says, I want you to have to have stuff, and I'm just going to mimic. Oh, he wants the damage to stay on board for Honchkrow. That's smart. That's smart. Yeah, because it's not like uh, this Audino is going to be that threatening, but... Um... Yeah, and um, unless Omnipoke is able to heal his board somehow, he is going to be exactly knocked out by this Honchkrow, the, the Polyrath will, because he has 130 damage on board, and then Raven's Claw deals plus 10. Uh, actually, with Reverse Valley, I guess it's even more so. But Omnipoke does have the ultimate counterplay, and that is Drain Slap healing the Audino mm -hmm. and taking the prize on the Chatot. So oh, that was a really good play on Omnipoke. Since he had the energy down, I was like, man, he could definitely attack with that Aldino, take a knockout, and then heal. So, uh, what a very interesting, like, turn of events. Very specific to these cards in general. You don't often see something turn out this way, but... <laughs> yeah. Definitely a Chaos Cube moment. Uh, really just a Cube moment in general. I feel you see lots of attacks that are unexpected in Cube. Oh, for sure. Like, just look at Porygon, too. Like, that's just not a play. You'd never... Probably would normally make... <laughs> Uh, when your back's against the wall, you, I mean, that's where the really good Q players shine is when they can utilize unconventional attacks too, as, in addition to their main strategy. So Al is going to Rosa for the Ordinary Rod and the Snivy, but I do wonder if he has a way to get the Breeder back. Because if he does, then the Superior is going to be a really nice attacker in this matchup. I mean, the, it deals 1 for 80, and this Polyrath is weak to grass. I guess I guess he does not have a way to get the breeder back because he does decide to bench this Deoxys. He might actually start going for snipes with the speed shot. That could be good. Um, that's the nice thing with having something like yeah. Song available to your deck. You can just like you have way quicker options of getting into Pokemon like this and really taking control of the board. Yeah, speed shot on the Poliwhirl is going to make it such that uh, Al knocks it out no matter when it hits the active, unless, of course, Omnipoke is able to heal it up. Uh, there is both a Vulpix and a Bellsprout in Omnipoke's hand. Very interested to see which of the two he decides he'd rather have in play at the moment, because he will be setting up either of them. The Ninetales is very nice because it has the Gust effect on evolution, and the Bellsprout evolves into the Victory Bell, which has a very good attack for one energy, and then an, an also good attack for three. So... Two good attacks on the victory bell. Very interested to see how Omnipoke plays this turnout. And I'm also interested to see if he decides to go for the knockout with the Polyrath. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. Unfortunately, 
he is 10 damage shy with dashing punch of being able to pow up the honchkrow and knock it out. I don't know if the samurai in the cube can clean up the damage though. I'm not sure either. Um, that honchkrow is looking very scary the more damage gets built up on this board. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So we see a hearing draw a card. It's just an energy spinner. Uh, you know, having an energy is pretty good here because Omnipoke doesn't actually have any, but um, it's probably not the best card in his deck. Really important to note, uh, Omnipoke has seven cards left and Al has four. Yeah, and do we know so... that? I guess like, a, <laughs> I guess Aline is your, your way to not deck out soon, but you know, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, they, they have eight prizes to take between the two of them and 11 cards in deck <laughs> between the two of them so this is uh not in their favor at the moment as far as resource availability you know ilama could go well for omnipoke but it could also go very poorly if he shuffles back and draws six and al only draws three so pretty risky venture now that said he'd rather play the ilama than deck out oh, completely. <laughs> so. you'd, you mean yeah, you definitely would rather not lose the game. So, but we're not quite there yeah. yet. But I definitely see that on the horizon, uh, unless Omnipoke has some way of shuffling cards back in that um, maybe he hasn't played yet. Audino going to retreat back into this go lurk, and Iron Fist of Justice does pick up the knockout on the Deoxys speed form just because of that psychic weakness. Seems like Al is potentially really kicking himself about this uh, this Pokemon Breeder being in the discard, but uh, again, we in his last four cards could be a way to recover. Yeah, I think that said, um, Omnipoke putting the Go Lurk in the active is going to force Al to take a whole bunch of damage off of uh, Joe Bernard's board. Yeah, the Go Lurk was just absorbing these damage counters for him, and uh, and we haven't seen attack from Honchkrow yet, but like this is definitely going to be. I guess the only prize he can really get out of it at this point. I guess he can. Um, they can't even snipe the the Audino later because it's gonna be he's gonna be twenty short. So kind of rough here. I don't think he's excited to take this knockout. He may actually be going into the Porygon, or maybe he's just getting the Porygon ready. I am really impressed by how powerful that attack is with uh, with an AT or with a Evolutor. Yeah, it's definitely been putting in. Uh, it put in some solid work in the past few turns. Uh. Great, great ability with the great uh, attack to go with it. <laughs> Couldn't quite ask for more. Al is going to go for the Raven's Claw here, so just getting aggressive. Seems like he doesn't want to bench the Snivy, which indicates to me that Superior is probably off the table as expected. Um, Polyrath, though, really scary card right now. Yeah. Although, I guess Omnipoke does not have a way to knock out this Honchkrow immediately, at least. Because Polyrath only deals 100. Oh, that's true. So, Al might get a little bit more value out of it yet. Yes. Yeah, He's got to be concerned about decking out, though. The dashing punch will only do 100, so it'll leave him with 10, le 10 HP left. And unless he has a way to, um, I guess, poison or burn. If he, I guess the, uh, what's it, the. Weeping Bell does poison and burn. Doesn't help him this turn though without that out, but he does have a way to. Yeah, definitely. I, I'm if you're Omnipoke, you, you have to be looking at the POW on this Bronzong at this point. Yeah, I think you can um, actually KO the Bronzong this turn, and then if he has he has the Bell Sprout, if he can go into the Weeping Bell next turn, if, assuming uh, Omnipoke goes in with, or uh, Festival goes in with the Honchgrove. He can evolve, burn poison the active, and then um, attack with uh, Whirlpool if he wanted to. No, I mean for the deck out. Leave the oh. Bronzong in the active and just let Al deck out. He's got three cards left. Oh, he is at three cards. Yeah, I haven't been able to see the, the, the deck counts on my end, but yeah, this might actually work depending on how much energy he has left, because even the two... He, three manual attachments is going to not win him the game. <laughs> Although we do see... A yeah, Al... Yeah, Al draws the Sacred Ash. He has... Four Pokemon in hand, but or four Pokemon in discard. But he has the ordinary route as well, which is hoping to hit some of those Pokemon as well. So really not as many turns as it seems. And there's definitely no way Al is going to get through a POW hand extension as well. So I'm uh, 
Unless the last couple of cards in Al's deck are energy, he might just deck out this time. Yeah, six energies would be a tall ask. I don't know how many he has in the discard. Are you able to check? Yeah, yeah. So in the discard, Al has four metal and one dark. So he can recover, I guess, a maximum of, well, assuming he has, I don't know how many he has left. But yeah, I don't think he's going to have access to six energies. Yeah, I don't think there's any way that Al can avoid decking out here, unless in his last two cards he has some major recovery or a switch. Given that he's decided to attach to the Bronzong, though, I do not suspect the switch is in there. Yeah. So I guess is he... he can at least... Is he trying to attack with the Bronzong, do you think, or...? No, I think he's trying to get it out of the active. Hmm. Omnipoke has healed up with uh, um, with uh, Audino's Drain Slap. It's pretty riskless. It doesn't knock out the Bronzong, and it gets damage off of his board, which makes the Honchkrow even weaker. Uh, Alistair off of the turn being Erica's Hospitality is probably one of the most useless cards in his deck. I guess Alistair's waiting until he's decked out to play his recovery. Yeah, it could very well be. Looks like a Metal Link's onto the Del Caddy. Al might have another energy in deck, and, and he knows it, so he could be waiting to draw that last card as well, get that, and then start shuffling things back. Even through a Sacred Ash and an Ordinary Rod, though, I do not think he's going to be able to get where he needs to be. Right, so... Um, yeah, it would take him a lot of turns to get through this Aldino as well, because it, it's uh, Bronze Line would effectively be dealing... 30 because it's 60 and then he could attack deal 30 but then he lose the bronze on so seems very risky i guess like in this, in this oh case, interesting amiko actually takes the knockout on the bronze on which puts him at how many prizes now three yeah, uh, two prizes, actually. Two prizes. So maybe maybe he thinks he can play the prize game at this point. I mean, at this point, he has pretty much a knockout for Polyrath if he can evolve into that uh, Weeping Bell. And then uh, and then he, he probably only needs one more energy to attack with the Samurai without knowing which one is in there. So yeah, I think two prizes are probably fairly achievable. And you can see pretty much everything that Al has on his board is not very effective. Uh, it's not really going to be taking that much damage, so... All right, now Al is going to swing with this poor gun again. First flip, tails. Second flip, heads. Okay, Omnipoke does know how to flip heads on a coin. <laughs> so it looks like he's sleeping, but not burned anymore. Just got Probably it. the reverse of what he'd prefer, just because like it is going to prevent him from attacking it for another turn. Uh, Al is on three prizes, though, so Al actually at a prize disadvantage at this point in the game. It feels like these stop cards like Kyle from gameplay, but yeah, he I don't quite know what would get him like past that threshold. Um, and he still only has three cards in deck. I mean, he'll be able to shuffle cards back in with Sacred Ash, but he needs to set up something to start dealing with Omnipoke's board. Bronzong comes down with a metal. He reconsiders the metal. He actually attaches to the Dedene. He's going to retreat into the Dedene and take the knockout with that. I don't hate this play. He's just saying, you know, I think Porygon 2 is more valuable than Dedene is right now, which is a totally reasonable conclusion to come to in the situation. Um, Dedene doesn't have any great damage against Omnipoke's deck, considering it doesn't hit anything for weakness, and doesn't seem like his attack costs are particularly high. Yeah, I mean, this seems like a fine play. I think he's got so much value out of that Porygon to, like, attack anyway that he'd probably want to preserve that. It probably is how he's going to be able to inch his way through uh, maybe a Sage 2 or something. Yeah, this is this is definitely a close one, but the Polyrath is such a threatening thing for Omnipoke to have left in his deck. Yeah, that Polyrath... Even, even without the damage bonus from coming off the bench, 50 for 1 is not bad. Right. It's funny. I feel like we've been talking about... It feels like kind of like the Cold War here because we've been talking about like these powerful weapons they've had in the back and then we have not seen them come out in the active yet. <laughs> yeah, in the game, like we're like, oh, Honchkrow has this and Polyrath has this, but really it's just like Audino hit for 30, Porygon hit for 30, Dedene <laughs> hit for 40. It's a lot of uh, very small attacks kind of back and forth. 
that I feel like losing some of these bigger bonds at at, at those points in the games would be very ca catastrophic. So I cannot understand why they're choosing to go these strats. It's just kind of funny to think that like a polyrath doing 100 is like has yet to see the active yet. But I guess he's um, I guess he might see the active soon. Uh, I wonder what Joe is thinking about at this point. Probably thinking about what his attack options are. So he only needs two prizes to win the game, correct? Yep. So the Dedene, if he takes it, or if he knocks out the Dedene this turn, it'll be a first prize very quickly. However, maybe he is thinking about a deck out strategy at this point. Uh, you know, maybe let Al have the prize, then pow up the Lapras or the Bronzel. Yeah. Just because Omnipot can't actually play Pow right now because they're tied on prizes, but uh, if he intentionally lets Al go ahead here, then could give him a window to get back into the game. Yeah. Um, it's it's interesting because you know exactly like what, what Pokemon you're up against on the next two turns because there's nothing that can evolve into a stage two. So like I'm wondering if he can't just take the knockout with... I'm wondering if he has the Oshawa or the, the Samurai in deck. He only has so many cards left. We have yet to see it evolve. Because my thought would be, okay, I guess it comes down to how much energy you have left available to you and how much... Um, um, oh, there's a scramble too. I was going to say, if you can't take the knockout with the Samurai and the Polyrath, then that's a hard decision. But if he's able to set up a knockout this turn with the Polyrath and the next turn retaliate with the Samurai, then he wins the game. Easy. So, um, I think it really comes down to right now is Samurai in his deck. Because he can take a knockout this turn on Polyrath, and the same route does enough damage to knock out whatever he sends in the active, um, then he's pretty much good to go. Float gonna come down. Polyrath is the play here. Interested to see if Omnipoke has any recovery that we're not seeing in his hand right now, either in the prizes or in deck. Yeah, we haven't really seen anything. If he's gonna drop the scramble. Interesting. Maybe he wants the retreat option if Al disrupts his hand. That's fair, I guess. Yeah. Evolutionary Light. I think he's probably just checking his deck. I would be very surprised if he actually searched a card here. Like he is going to take Samurai the out of prizes. Okay, that's what I was wondering if he had access to his uh his evolution there. And that attacker can be pretty you know devastating. The 90 plus 30, and then the resolute blade does 40 damage and then can knock out a Pokemon if he goes below a certain threshold. So definitely a good card to see. It knocks out a lot of Al's board, actually. Everything but the Honchkrow. So um Yeah, I think I think Al's endgame here, wherever it ends up being, involves the Honchkrow. Yeah. Although, if it's the Weepa Bell I'm thinking in this cube, then uh, even that won't save Al from getting knocked out. Al going into the Porygon instead of the Honchkrow here, essentially saying, I don't think you can attack with Polyrath, and I'm not afraid of the Samurott because I don't think it's in your deck or you don't have the energy for it. So, interesting decision to go for the Porygon here. Omnipoke first flip, Tails. He's so good at flipping Tails in this match. <laughs> Second flip, Heads. But that, I believe, does mean he's asleep. I think he's been flipping for sleep first and burn second, so... I wonder if he has another energy. Because that's what he needs to close the game. Is an energy. Um, if he doesn't have that, there's no hope. Um, especially if Al can get this knockout. Yeah, if there's no energy left in Omnipoke's deck, I don't think there was any hope from the beginning. Yeah. So, really interested to see how this turns out for him. You get the Samurai off. That's a good start. Uh, I guess Resolute Blade does. He can't attack with it if he wants to. Um, yeah, Omnipoke deciding to go for the knockout on the last turn actually makes it so that the deck out strategy with Pow and Rescue Stretcher is not live. Right. Uh, I guess Ultimate Blade is pretty spooky if Al, if, uh, Al ever has a Pokemon that has um, is going to drop below that 60 HP mark. Um, but I don't know what the odds of that are happening are. So... <laughs> I don't know if he has an energy. That's the real thing. With that rescue stretcher, it's pretty clear that the yeah. uh, there's no energy in Omnipoke's deck. But yeah. um, the ultimate blade does still knock out the Porygon if the Polyrath can wake up. So um, problem is, Al's got one prize left, right? No, Al has two prizes left. 
So, <laughs> a lot can still happen. I wonder if he can just get the uh, same route in the active and just whatever he hits. I mean, if he hits the Honchko, it faints next turn. Um, so there's not really like a lot of good options he has that like everything pretty much KOs by this ultimate blade. So it's kind of an interesting check lady card. Yeah, Al is in a rough spot here. He may actually have to go for the machine burst and just um, bank on Omnipoke flipping tails again. Because if he can kill the Polyrath coming back in his own turn, then it would give him a better clock for the Honchkrow. As it stands, if he promotes the Honchkrow and the Honchkrow knocks out the Polyrath, then the Samurott will very easily be able to come up and Ultimate Blade twice to knock out the Honchkrow. Yeah, that should be devastating. Uh, Al does decide to retreat here. We've seen this bell strike, and we see that he has the victory bell. Like, I'm just wondering where the weeping bell would be. Prizes, maybe? Maybe. A very unfortunate prizes, then. <laughs> I'm assuming that's where it has to be if he um, shuffled back in three. Okay. Unless maybe he shuffled the, weep, uh, the weeping bell back and we didn't see it. Maybe. Uh, it looks like he is taking the knockout with Honchko, um, so maybe we will see. Oh, he does have an energy. Okay, so there is... he can pike. Yeah. and uh... I don't think there's a big difference between pike and ultimate blade at this point, though. You, you're probably... So Al next turn is definitely going to retreat back into his Porygon and Machine Burst. Yeah, I think if he just throws up uh... Samurai, I don't think Al can win. Well, Al can if he gets lucky. Oh, right. Because what happens... Fights. Yeah, yeah. he... Omnipoke goes back into the Samurai, hits the Honchkrow, Al retreats into the Porygon, and then hopes that Omnipoke flips tails again. I mean, it could happen. It's happened before. <laughs> so. It could happen. It has happened very many times before, so definitely not out of the question. Yeah, so he's going to need a little bit of luck with these coin flips. But yeah, I think the best bet is just send up the Samurai and... Uh... You know, hope for the best. But there's, you know, so there's still some, uh, some game plan left for Al with that machine burst. Which, wow, such a great attack on a, a great support Pokemon. I mean, Poke does decide he wants to put the energy on the Sir, uh, on the Samurott. Interesting choice. He could theoretically, if Al has some weird gusty stuff, he could get decked out with the Bell Sprout Nine Tails. But uh, it's it's pretty fringe. So. Decides to go for the pike, though. Just wants to put the damage on the Porygon, too. I don't really think that means anything other... I don't think it means anything different from Ultimate Blade, although it does give him better odds of playing around healing. If Al has any, like, heal 60s in the deck, then Hunchcrow will not be able to avoid being knocked out in the following turn, whereas if he just went for the Ultimate Blade, then it definitely would have. So uh, I, I can see the the thinking. You're basically playing around very fringe cases either way. Yeah, I mean, there's no there's no harm in it. It doesn't really change anything. Plus, I guess more damage in play is just, you know, it's fine. Um, so, yeah, I guess we're, it really is just going to come down to you. If he burns or sleeps, like, what happens? So, <laughs> looks like that is what we're going to see here with the Porygon 2. This is probably going to be the deciding uh, turn here. Yeah, game decider. Here we go. Can Omnipoke wake up on the Machine Burst? I was thinking. I guess he's just double checking if he missed anything or anything else that he can do. Could be. Oh, and Omnipoke does wake up. That uh, is going to be the game for Omnipoke. He finally flipped the heads <laughs> on that Porygon too. Yeah, best that of card kept heads. Al in the game for best of flip heads when it matters. And there's the Weeping Bell off the last prize. Um, that's the one I was thinking about with the uh, status conditions. But Omnipoke, Joe Bernard. Coming out on top. What a close series. That was actually a very interesting game. Different than where I was expecting it to go, especially with the Pokemon that are in play. So, uh, I don't know. Any thoughts uh, before we move on? Nope. I, um, I think this was a great game to watch. A lot of interesting stuff. Lots of tales on Joe Bernard's side, but he did turn it around. So... Excited to see the next game of this event, though. Yep, so we'll be back with that shortly, so we'll be right back.